we're going to dive back into Pro Tools, dive back into uh, several, uh, add to your uh, list of skills, basically. Uh, again, the last two classes where I did this were recorded, so if you need to uh, recap some of those things, I'll recap some things today, but if you need to recap them in more detail, all of that is captured, and I do encourage you to, 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 to sit and uh, watch some of that stuff again to make sure you've got that material, especially if you missed class, okay? Uh, but we're going to be diving back into Pro Tools, uh, and we covered a lot of things last time, right? Uh, in terms of managing your recordings, in terms of working with the edit window. We're going to look, look at the edit window again, but we're also going to look at some of the features of the mix window as well, okay? Um, so just to kind of recap where we were last time, I'm going to flip back out of this. No, not going to let me. Awesome. Okay. Um, we had Pro Tools open. I'm actually just going to open up my session from last time. Hopefully, you guys saved your session from last time as well, where you had the regions captured with one, you know, zero through nine. No. Nope. So. Okay, but we're on. We're in Pro Tools today, though, right? I mean, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't have it, uh, you should be able to work through this. Okay, I just want to recap some things, okay, and then add to the, the list of uh, techniques, okay. Um, it'll help that you ha if you have audio on your track, but if you don't, uh, you should be able to see what, what I'm going at here because we're going to get to a kind of an in-class assignment where you're going to uh, build on these skills, okay. Um, so we talked about having recordings and managing recordings, right, and I can kind of delete this. So if we wanted to, I don't know, have Stetson's phone number. What's what's? Does anybody know what Stetson's main phone phone number is? Anybody know the n number for public safety? Let's see. We can put that up there rather than my phone number this time. I realized that after class when I was editing things, I was like, oh, that was really dumb. I'm 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 creating a video for YouTube and I'm putting my phone number in there basically. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, three eights. Anyway, let's look. Somebody look this up. Google it. Look on the website. Three. Public safety uses three eight six. Yep. A Okay, so three eight six. I don't know why I have two eights. Eight two two. Now they're gonna get a bunch of calls from YouTube people. A two two seven three zero zero. You said? Yeah. Okay, seventy three hundred. Okay, so I'm dragging clips or regions, as I call them sometimes because uh, there's nine versions of calling them regions, but as you guys are uh, calling them in your version, clips, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm using this first audio track to uh, just set up the number for public safety, okay? Why are these things uh, spaced out like this as I drag them onto the track? Does anybody remember? Yeah, I'm in slip mode, okay? So right up here at the top, I'm in slip mode. If I want to make sure that these butt up against each other end to end, okay? If I slip, uh, change from slip to shuffle mode, when I start to use the grabber tool now, they should connect to each other, okay? And you see that yellow line that pops up as I'm moving them? Hopefully you can see that. That tells me where it's going to place the sound file. So if I want to get these nice and tight and together here, it's a lot easier to do that with the grabber tool in shuffle mode, okay? And we talked about the different tools last time. We'll, we'll encounter some of these as well. One other thing, so... Staying in shuffle mode, one thing I want to point out here, okay, if you use this, if you switch over to the trim tool, okay, and you feel free to try this out after you've got them kind of uh, butted up together in, end to end, if you use the trim tool while in shuffle mode, notice what happens. See how you can adjust the beginnings and endings without actually changing the end to end placement? Okay, it'll keep them end to end, but it'll add a little bit of the the original recording into the mix. Okay, I saw a hand up. Yeah, Alex. Is there a way to um, make it so that the well, I guess like the decibel level is like the same as the bottom of the? Oh, okay. So you've got a situation where your recording is really quiet. Well, I can hear it just fine, but it's just it shows really nice. Okay, I'll get to that in a second because I want to show you one thing first about this track and then I'll show you how to bring it back on and maybe uh, normalize it because normalizing is the process that we did in Pro in Amadeus, right? You can do that in Pro Tools too. I'll get that in a second. Okay. When Matt. When you're in shuffle mode, does it automatically kind of do like a fade in between each? No, it, it never 
overlaps the recordings. It always puts them end to end. Okay, so it's not going to do any kind of crossfade between them. Because like in Amadeus, you know, you kind of want to fade them at the beginning. You want to do that here and um, you can. We'll get into. We're gonna hopefully get to automation today. Okay, and how to add fades. Okay, that's that's where I'm trying to end up today. Okay, um, but no, it doesn't do cross fades for you automatically. It it just butts them up against each other end to end, which is why it's good to have a, a recording with a quiet background uh, because then you can uh, have those kind of uh, seams basically between them. Okay, so now that I've got this, any other questions? Okay, uh, I'm going to go, ahead, let me select all, and I've got my recording here. Let me switch over to this. Okay, so I've got my recording of public safety's number. 3868227300. Great, okay, so everybody knows the number for public safety, okay. I've arranged this now on the track, okay. Uh, and last time I had you delete things and start over, right? Okay, remember I was I had you hit the delete key, remove it from the track, and start over. Uh, I was doing that to make a point of the fact that your material in your project, the clips in your project, don't go away. They stay in the clip list on the right-hand side, okay? A better way to do that, though, okay, uh, and something that Pro Tools lets you do is actually manage things through what are called takes, okay? So we were talking about... Uh, Les Paul and multi-tracking and uh, recording a performance over again. Okay, how do, how does the the term take as a noun fit factor in with that in terms of multi-track recording? Anybody know? Yeah, Jacob. Well, you can record multiple times of a certain passage of music, and then whichever one you like the most, you use and each one of those recordings is a take. Yeah. Okay. Did everybody get that? When you record something multiple times, or record through it in multiple passes, okay, maybe recording the same passage of music over and over again, in recording terminology, each one of those recordings is termed a take, okay? So the first time through is called take one. The second time through is called take two, take three, etc. Okay, everybody get that? That might be a new use of the term take for some of you, okay? But... That terminology has been adopted by Pro Tools in terms of managing different versions of individual tracks, okay? So even if you are a, a seasoned Pro Tools user, you might not be aware of this feature, but it is a good one that I like to introduce right from the beginning. So if you look at audio one on the, on your, in your edit window where it says audio one, that's the name of your track, okay? Right next to it, there's a little arrow pointing down. Everybody see that? It says playlist selector when you hover over it. Okay. And it, when you click on it, it, it reveals a little contextual menu. Okay. And you'll see that it has thing, two functions there, one called new and the other one called duplicate. Okay. So you can click on new. Oh, and now it's calling it playlist. It's not calling it take. Maybe it used to call it take. Okay. I call these takes. Because it's like having a multiple, uh, it's like having a do-over. Okay, so in your contextual menu, click on new. It's going to ask you to name your new playlist. So I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna call this uh, counting down. You can call it whatever you want, but uh, give it a name that um, means something as far as what you want to do with the numbers. Okay, and if I hit OK, you'll see that it removes my audio from the track. Okay, this is like deleting, but better because it's actually saved your previous configuration. It's still there in memory, but it's given you a nice, clean, blank slate for you to insert the audio again. Yeah, Alex? Oh, no, I just want to say, is it on the right side now? Like, look, there it is. How do you mean, over here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, everything's still there, okay, but... This is, uh, I think what I'm, what I'm trying to get at here is that this allows you to record a new version of that layer in your project or arrange a new version of that layer in your project, okay? So go back to that little menu, okay? You'll notice that there's, one, there's now two options, one called Audio 1 and one called whatever you named that new, okay? So if I hit Audio 1, my arrangement of the public safety phone number comes back, okay? If I hit counting down, I can now 
go back to my clip list or my region list, okay, and click and drag, and I can create a new count countdown here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and don't forget zero. Okay. Now if I hit play. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. So that's me counting down. If I click click on the menu again, flip the switch, I go back to audio one. Three, eight, six, eight, two, two, seven. Okay. Everybody see why that would be useful? Okay. No, you, you don't have to start over on the track and completely delete it. You can save the arrangement that you have on a given track and clear it so that you create a new recording, but that previous arrangement is still there. Yeah? Does that also affect um, like automation and things like that? Yes. It's so all your automation stuff, that which we're going to get to, gets saved along with that. Okay. Everybody see the usefulness of that? Okay. So get in the habit of using the, the playlist editor, the, the take menu. Yeah. So say you want to make, I don't know, say a third one, and you would like to have the second phone number countdown that you made. Mm -hmm. How would you create, say, like, I don't know, create new with, you know, that pre-existing? Like, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll do you one better because I'm going to answer Alex's question about how do we normalize the audio, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new, and I mean, if, if new creates a new blank track, what do you think duplicate does? Uh, ah, yeah, okay. Duplicate lets you use the existing track as a starting point and then maybe make some changes, and uh, it's really good for A-B comparisons. Do I want to make this change or do I not want to make this change, basically, okay? I'm going to go ahead and create a new one this time, though. And I'm going to take, uh, so let's see, I'm going to call this normalize, uh, well, I'll call it normal original. Okay. I'm going to take my, now remember in the regions list, right, I talked about the typography here and the fact that the typeface means something. Which, what, what do I look for if I want to find something that is an original complete recording in the, the regions list or the clips list over here? Bold, right? Okay. So bold means that it is my original recording. I'm going to dump that onto my track, okay? Now, if you're in the same boat that Alex is in where it's really quiet, okay, you want to normalize this, okay? If you used the grabber tool and dragged it on, onto the track, it should be all selected, yes? Okay. While it is all selected, okay, go to Audio Suite, Other, and you'll notice an old friend here, yes? from Amadeus, normalize, okay? Click on normalize, it should bring up a little floating window here, okay? Which is not unlike the, the Amadeus floating window because it gives you basically a, a, a point where you want to set your maximum level, okay, is what it's doing, okay? Uh, here you have two options, which we didn't really get into with Amadeus, RMS versus peak. I'm gonna avoid those for right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and say peak, and say 0 dB, if you do that and then hit process, you should notice your track gets louder, yes? Okay. You were just yeah. changing the dB, you weren't changing the other? No, I, uh, and if anything, I said leave the, the, the uh, dB at 0 and okay. leave this at peak and then hit process. And you should see your recording get louder. Okay. That's how you can normalize your recordings. Well, um, yeah. Does that help like, your... Well, yeah. yeah. Help, I mean, like, isn't there like a way to crop out empty space so that it's like zoomed in more on the audio? Crop out empty space so it's zoomed because in? We did that too in updates as well. Like, it's normalizing me super loud. Or, um, that's cool. No, that's... Uh, yeah, I'm doing like this. But I mean, like, is there a way to... Oh, you were just talking about this? Uh, if yeah, right up here in the zoom, the hor there is. We I talked about the left and right arrows being uh, horizontal zoom, but I did. I kind of overlooked the uh, vertical zoom here. So right here where it says audio zoom in, you can do that to make it look louder. Yeah, but keep right. in mind that 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 just makes it look louder. That doesn't actually yeah, make it louder. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you clicked the down there and uh, 
had it zoom out on the vertical axis, okay? That, I'll just, I mean, just a word of warning. That vertical zoom is helpful to a point. Uh, the danger is that it will make it look like your audio is plenty loud when it actually isn't, okay? So be aware of where your recording level is, okay? Um, okay, so... Everybody comfortable now with the idea of the playlist menu? Okay, everybody sees the usefulness of that? Okay, you don't have to delete and start over. Just create a new playlist and create a new arrangement there, okay? Uh, and then if you want to A, B, you can kind of go back and forth, okay? So you'll notice as well, when I did that normalize operation, there's no longer one thing in the clip list or the regions list that's bold now, right? So what does that tell me? The fact that I now have two bold options here. It's a new version? Yeah. It actually, when you do normalize, it creates a new sound file on the hard drive. Okay? So keep in mind. And in fact, that's true for anything in the audio suite menu. So there's a number of processing effects there. But every time you run something from the audio suite menu, it's going to create a new sound file on the hard drive. Okay? So... You have to kind of balance uh, between, and we're not really going to get too much into processing this project as we will for the next project, uh, but you have to kind of balance uh, creating new versions on the hard drive versus doing things in real time so that it's just in processing, okay? Uh, I'm just going to mention that. I'm not going to get too deep into that, that distinction. Yeah. Absolutely. That's actually where I was going next, okay? So naming your tracks and naming your regions is another way that you can keep your session tidy and neat and useful yes because I have I could come back to this three months from now and not know what was audio one right okay and in fact the, the, the fact that Pro Tools defaults the name to audio one makes it really unhelpful because there's plenty of projects on my hard drive where I'll be honest the clip says audio one I have no idea what it, what's actually in that audio file okay so in the regions list over here if I click on it if I just double click on the name, okay, and this goes for any name, not just the ones that are actual sound files on the hard drive, but the virtual regions as well. If you want to rename something in the regions list, just double click on it, it'll bring up this menu. So this is me, uh, I'll just, I'll instead of audio one, I'm going to actually counting up norm, and I'll know that norm is normalized, okay. Pro Tools has a whole series of, uh, I don't know, shortened names of the different audio suite effects that it tags onto these file names, okay? So I'm going to call this counting up norm, uh, and you'll see that there's an, um, an option here whether to name the region only or to rename the region and the disk file, okay? So it, it can actually reach into your audio files folder and name that file for you. I'm going to hit OK. That's counting up norm. Okay, I can do the same thing with my original counting up, and maybe I want to put take one here. Okay, that's where when you have multiple recordings, naming them based on takes is very useful. Okay, so that's take one. I've got my normalized version. I can go back to my counting. My this is my counting Nine, down. Eight. It doesn't affect anything. It, it, it's smart enough to know that, okay, you changed the file name. That's still, that region still goes with that file, so it's still connected, okay? Um, but if I want to do a new recording, I just hit New. Uh, I'm going to call this new playlist counting, counting Up Take 2. Boom. Okay. I can connect my microphone here. Plug it in. Test, test, test. Am I getting sound? No. Awesome. It's driven. Test. I'm actually seeing no level coming out. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, record enable, arm my track, hit play. One, two, three, four. Five, oh, I messed up. Five, six, oh, wait, four. Which one comes next? Okay, so I messed up that take. Awesome.
Okay, but I messed up a take. Do I have to start over? No. I simply go new, counting up take three. Maybe I'll get it right this time. Record, play, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, great. I like that recording. You got a question? Yes, I do. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm glad that wasn't a keyboard. Okay. Um, put that on. Can you put that on the floor for me? <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. To the right of um, of the grid and nudge. What? How do I? Um, how do I get that section back for me to pause, record, play, fast forward? You know, Where like, are you talking about now? Um, to the right of the nudge and grid, the two little sections up on the, the very top. Here, um, here. The other, end, the other end of that um, graph, that page. Other end. Oh, yeah, you're you're missing this here. Yeah. Okay, if you're missing this transport right here, uh, I believe it's under View, Edit Window Views. No, not there. We can try Window Configurations. Yeah, you can get you can just launch the transport from here. So if you go to Window Transport it'll bring up that floating transport we were using before. Okay. If you want the transport in your actual edit window, there's this little down arrow right here. That lets you tick off what you want to see in your edit window. So you see how in this list it says zoom controls, transport. Okay. Your transport is probably not checked. Window. My, tra my transport is checked. No, I'm, I'm saying right here in the edit window. Yes. This one right here, it says transport right there. And it's checked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we talked about naming regions. You can also name your tracks. So if you double click there, okay. So if you've got a a, a track name there, uh, it's a good idea to name the tracks ahead of your recording. If you name your tracks before recording, it'll actually name your recordings according to the name of the track. Can we follow that? So naming the track, so if you know that you're going to be recording guitar onto a track, go ahead and name it guitar so that every time you make a recording, it'll call it guitar one, guitar two, rather than audio one, audio two, audio three, okay? So that's naming, okay? That'll help you start to get organized in your tracks, okay? Because very quickly, you'll lose, if you name everything audio, you'll quickly lose track of what is on each track, okay? So we now need to talk about the mix window. Okay, I'm going to put this back in slip mode. I've got the grabber tool. Great. Okay, I've got my counting up. Awesome. I want to, um, let's see here. Well, before I do that, though, uh, the mix window is not really very useful when I have one track in my session. And I spent the whole first part of ta talking, class talking about multi-track, yes? Okay. So, how did I, anybody remember, how did I add that track to my session? Yeah, track, new, okay, so if you go to track, new, I've already got one track in my session, I'm going to say go ahead and add three tracks, three mono audio tracks in samples, okay, I want you to go ahead and add three mono audio tracks to your session, we're going to stick with mono for now in terms of the tracks, okay. It's still a stereo project, but our tracks are mono, okay? Well, hopefully I can, you can start to see that distinction uh, as we go forward here. But I'm going to go ahead and hit Create, okay? And you'll notice that I've got, uh, it's using that generic naming convention, right? Audio 1, Audio 2, Audio 4, okay? Um, let's see. Maybe I want to get to my uh, in-class project idea first before I start to explain features of this, because this will help drive the discussion, okay? So the homework that you had to do was, uh, that was just kind of a, a silly little discussion board uh, assignment, uh, was to brainstorm five ways to complete the following phrase, we are going to, boom, 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 boom. okay? So this is a, this is a crowdsourced in-class task, okay? Because I asked you what your opinion was in terms of the best way to uh, complete this phrase, okay? The best responses I got, in my opinion, okay? Uh, we are going to beat your eardrums. 
I thought that was a pretty good one. We are going to learn Pro Tools eventually. I like the, the qualifier adverb eventually here, okay? Uh, and we are going to make it like it was, which I'm not exactly sure what that means or what there's a reference to, but okay. Uh, let's all do this as an in-class task, but choose one of these phrases that we're going to be doing. Which one do we want to... So you've seen the phrases up here. Let's have a vote. How many people want to uh, beat your eardrums? We're going to record this phrase over and over again, and everybody's going to do this. So you need to vote for one. Beat your eardrums, we have one vote. Okay. No, two votes. Wait. Going once, going three votes, going twice. Okay, three votes for beat your eardrums. How many votes for Pro Tools eventually? Three, four, five. You're voting twice, Joe. Thank you very much. Five. Okay, Alex has a hand up. Okay, Pro Tools eventually has five votes. It's in the lead. And make it like it was. How many people want to vote for that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, make it like it was wins by one vote. Okay. So the phrase that we're going to all be recording is, we're, we are going to make it like it was. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to record four layers of that. Okay. We're going to do our initial recording. Then we're going to record while listening to our original recording. Then we're going to record without listening to our original recording. And then we're, uh, this is the, in the degree of difficulty, if we get to this, okay, we're going to reverse it, listen to it reversed, and try to say it reversed, and record ourselves trying to say it reversed. Do you follow that? Okay. This is what I want to do with these four layers that we just set up in our recording, okay? Okay. So our task now, in terms of demoing this, so I'm going to go ahead and click on new up here in the first layer. And so this is my initial recording okay and we're now pretty uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this we're now pretty far from our February 14th demo so if you still have something up here that says February 14th demo or whatever you are counting up or whatever it's okay to use this as the basis for your project but you probably don't want to keep hitting save and overwriting that okay so go to file go to save as so file save as and this is going to be our make it like it was. I'm going to call it make it like it was one. Okay. Something to point out here. You'll notice that we're inside. Remember I mentioned Pro Tools creates a folder for your project, right? With a number of additional support folders. Okay. When I do a save as and I save it in that folder, you'll notice that it's just going to create another PTX or PTF file. So hit save. And I'll do this real quick. Let me click back on, here it is, okay. So you'll notice here, in my session folder, it just created another PTF folder, PTF file, excuse me, okay. This is very handy for saving different versions of your project. In fact, I would get in the habit of saving as, because if you get in the habit now of save as day one, save as day two, save as day three, Oh crap, I messed up something on day three. I want to go back to day two. You see where that's useful? Okay. And because Pro Tools does this where it has this folder of everything, each one of these PTF files is very small. Yes, 97 kilobytes, 56 kilobytes. Okay. But in that small file is everything that Pro Tools needs to rebuild your session from the source material. I understand that? So you're not saving a new, you know, as you make recordings, you're not saving a new 90 megabyte file. You're saving a new 96 kilobyte file, okay? So there's no reason not to save as and have different versions as you go through re the revision process, okay? So this is our make it like it was, okay? So we've got our initial recording on track one. I'm going to go ahead and record enable, and you should too. And you need to make your in initial recording of we are going to make it like it was. That was the phrase, yes? Okay. So here I go, one, two, three, and I have a good level here. It's kind of quiet, I don't know why. So go ahead and make your initial recording. We are going to make it like it was, okay? So just so we're clear, I've, most of the people that are, uh, most of the people that are having uh, issues are having issues with input and output settings, okay? So that, that was the first thing I wanted to kind of recap. So. Or, or, or get to in terms of the mix window, okay? If you don't have the mix window open, go ahead and open the mix window. You've been recording on track one, and right here at the top, remember we have that I.O. section that I mentioned before? Make sure that your I is set to input one, 
make sure that your O is set to output one and two on the fast track, okay? You should have a clearly labeled option in both of those menus that says fast track. Make sure your fast track is your input, make sure your fast track is your output, okay? I gotta jump back in here because I wanna show you a, a few things. I've, so I've got my initial recording here. We are going to make it like it Okay. If I now, okay. Hope, so hopefully some of you have uh, stepped through this process. I see a few folks that have multiple tracks of audio, okay. But if I want to listen to this track while recording on another track, what would I do? Yeah, I just played it and I could record, okay. But Jacob had a, a, a uh, if I, if I were to start recording again right now, I would actually write over this track. Yeah, I first need to arm the system. Okay, there's that feedback, yeah, okay. So you need to watch your I.O. settings, okay. So maybe we want to check the I.O. settings first, okay. What do you see here? We've got built-in input one, that's not what I want. I want fast track input, I want fast track output, okay. And in fact, I'm going to be doing that on all of these. Pro Tools will default to other options, okay. So you need to make get in the habit of checking your I.O. settings before doing recordings, okay. So I've now gone through all of my I.O. settings and changed the input to 1, the output to 1 and 2, okay? If I were to record right now, I would actually record over my original track. I don't want to do that, okay? So what Jacob was saying is unarm the first track and then arm the second track. That tells Pro Tools I want to record here, okay? So maybe last time when we were doing a recording, you didn't understand why we had to first arm the track and then arm the session. Now that we're into multi-tracking, it should be obvious. When we're recording, we need to tell Pro Tools which track to record to, because we don't always want to record to every track, right? Sometimes we want to hear a track while we're recording to a different track, okay? So if I now, if I hit record enable and then play now, I should hear myself coming over the speakers from before, but record this track, okay? And in fact, you, you should hear, you hear that microphone is coming through the speakers right now. If you don't want to hear the part that you're recording right now, if you simply hit either in the mix window or the edit window, mute, I can record and mute a track at the same time. Pro Tools is perfectly happy with that, okay? So this M that you see on the track is a mute button, okay? I'm talking, you see the level meter going up and down, but it's not going through the speakers, right? Okay? If I hit play now, I'm going to hear my original recording, but I'm going to be recording me talking, okay? We are going to make it like it was. Okay, so now I have a second take of me recording, listening to the other version. Ideally, I'd be using headphones, but I want you guys to hear what I'm hearing, right? Okay, so now if I hit, if I record disable, if I unmute, okay, and I hit rewind here. I can play this now. I should hear two of me. We are going to make it like it Okay. See where I'm going with this? Okay. That's me trying to li that's me listening and recording, right? Okay. I might get a different response if I just simply watch the waveform, okay? So my second uh, or third option for you guys was to mute both of the original tracks, record, but just simply watch the waveform and see if you can kind of match up with it, okay? We are going to make it like it was. And that actually looks like it might be better timing, okay? So now I've got three of me. We are going to make it like it was. Okay. Welcome to multi-tracking, yes? Did you keep the three tracks? Um, you only, only the current track you're recording, you keep uh, armed? Yes. Okay. You only arm the current track that you want to record to, yeah. Did you mute the track that you were recording? I recorded, yeah, I muted both tracks, both the original tracks, and then recorded a new one just watching the waveform. Okay, so like each time you're recording, you're to like the last one, or is that just like... That's an option. Okay. What, what I'm trying to point out here is there's two different ways to record new material. One, while you're listening to the original, and two, while you're not listening to the original, and both of those are going to affect your performance, yes? Okay, there's a difference in listening and trying to match what you did versus just watching the waveform and, and recording something new, okay? 
So if you haven't had a chance to do that, go ahead and record two more layers, okay? Let me give you a minute to do that because it shouldn't take you that long. This is a nice short phrase, yes? Make sure you've got two layers there because the, the last one is the, the degree of difficulty goes up. Sounds real creepy. What? Sounds real creepy? Okay, reversing it. Yeah. Oh, it's fading. Okay. It sounds like a hardware issue again. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry we're having such... I just... I can't express how mad I am about the hardware issues we're having on this. Yes? Yeah, I'm trying to hear it playing back, and it won't. And then it'll say my buffer size is wrong. Your buffer size is wrong? Okay. Try this for buffer size. Right when so here in the um, playback engine, you can try this. Try upping this, maybe. Uh, go to setup playback engine. Yeah. Try upping that. See if that helps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That. Try that buffer size that I was just showing him. So if you're having kind of garbled playback, go to Playback Engine and check this hardware buffer size. You can play around with this size and sometimes uh, fix some of the garbled quality that you guys are hearing. It seemed it. Uh, I, I guess what I'm struggling with is it. There doesn't seem to be a magic number that I tell you. Everybody set it to this number, okay? Because it seems to be computer specific at this point, which makes it that much harder to deal with. I, I'm saying I don't know what number is the right number for each computer because it seems to be computer specific. But I, I'm showing you where this is so that you play with it if you're getting garbledness. Okay. I need like undo like a normal version of my product. I think I normalize it and I'll just um, Your uh your unnormalized version should still be in your regions list or your clip list, so you can just delete the normalized version and replace it with the unnormalized version. Yeah. You're tampering with the uh the processors that samples in sorry. Samples. Yeah. Not the processors. Okay. Hopefully you now have um, yes. you now have multiple copies and you're hearing them. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Hopefully you now have at least three copies. Okay. Let me show you real quick how you might uh, record yourself reversed. Okay. Uh, we're probably going to have time for everybody to duplicate this because I'm very conscious of the fact that we're running uh, close to the end here. Okay. And I, I want to make sure I get. Uh, show you the rest of what you can do with the mix window, okay? <clears throat> More than just the input and output settings, okay? I'm going to mute the first two tracks. I'm going to click on the third one. I'm going to duplicate this track, and I'm going to say, you know, this is take three uh, reversed is what I'm going to call it, okay? So I basically duplicated my, origi my original and made a copy of it, but I'm now going to reverse it. While this region, this clip is selected, if I go to the audio suite menu, under other, right next to our old friend normalize, there's also a, a, a version called reverse. So that is actually going to bring up a window, great, and then I hit process, and it's going to reverse the sound for me. So just so you hear what that sounds like. Okay, isn't that great? You want to hear that again? Okay, I have no idea what that sounds like. So. If I, um, I'm going to try to, okay, so that was in the audio suite menu, other, reverse. You have to have a clip selected before you do that. But again, you'll notice in the regions list, it creates a new version, much like the normalized. There's a new region that shows up here of the reversed audio, okay? So I'm going to try to say this, how it's saying it reversed. Okay. I'm going to record enable track four. I'm going to hit record. And while I'm listening to the reversed, I'm going to try and say it reversed. Oh, that's, I got to stop. 
There. Okay. I wasn't at the beginning of my track. Well, you can do it slow. Snell would have a Okay. So now I've got me saying it backwards while I listen to it backwards, which sounds something like this. Okay, great. Okay. Now I want to go back, right? Because I created a take here, all I have to do is drop down my list, go back to audio three. I've got my unreversed take, okay? But now in this one, I need to create a new duplicate. Okay, this is going to be audio four reverse. And I'm going to select this track, this region with the grabber tool, go to audio suite, other, and reverse it back. Hit process. So now I've got me trying to mimic what it sounded like reversed, but then reversed it again so that it's played forward. We'll see if it sounds like the original. I don't know. I Probably not, I would gather. So this is me saying it backwards, but then reversing me saying it backwards. OK, great. OK. But if I add that into the mix now, we are going to make it as the OK. It sort of works. It flushes it out a little bit, OK? So I've got these four tracks now, OK? What do I do with this? This is where the mix window comes in, because right now, you've got everything panned dead center, and you've got everything at full amplitude, OK? How do you mix this up a little bit? Because right now, effectively, you're creating a mono composition still, even though you've got mu multiple tracks, multiple layers, OK? Here, you have pan knobs. So if you pan things, I'll probably leave it like this and like this, OK? If you turn the knob to the left, it goes to the left. If you turn the knob to the right, it goes to the right in your headphones, OK? So let me just do this real quick uh, bup, 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 so you can listen to one track. If I hit, if I hit play, we are going to make it like it was. See how I pan it over there? We are going to make it like it was. Now it's over there. Okay. So panning controls where you are between left and right. Yeah, Marisha. Um, when I click reverse, it didn't reverse it. Yeah, yeah, I have to make sure it's highlighted first. Yeah, it's highlighted. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm blitzing through that because I, I, I want to get to I want to get to the mix window. Okay. Um, we've got panning here, basically. So the, the key thing to understand here is this controls the balance between the left and right speakers, this knob right here. So this row of knobs for each track controls where you are in the left and right speakers. So now that I've panned it left and right, if I hit play, we are going to take it like it was. Everybody hear the difference between... As opposed to if I just go back to everything being panned dead center, I'll just, and I won't get it exactly. So here's everything straight up at 12 o'clock. We are going to take it as the Okay. If I instead pan something to the left, pan something to the right, pan something a little bit off like that, now I hit play. We are going to take it as the Everybody hear the difference there? You're getting different information from each speaker. Okay. It'll be even more obvious on headphones if you try this out. Okay. You also then have this control here, which controls your level. So I can, if I decide this one, I like it, but I want it to be in the background a little bit, I can just turn it down a little bit. I can turn this one down a little bit. I can really turn down the backwards one. We are going to make it like it was. OK. So you can play around with these two different controls. I've, I, I'm going to have to recap some of this on Thursday, I imagine, yes, because we went through it pretty quickly here at the end of class. But get. The, the, the key thing to realize about the mix window is it's not just input and output controls. You have panning controls for left and right placement. You have level controls for how loud the track is. Okay, You should, at this point, have enough information to try something for me. Okay, So this is what I want you to do. for uh, if Try this as your homework. Okay, And if you don't get it done in homework, you can uh, work on it with some of the in-class time. Okay, Re-record your SoundCloud greeting with... I don't know, 10 multi-track layers. Remember that SoundCloud greeting, like, hi, this is blank, and welcome to my SoundCloud? Do 10 layers of that, trying these various techniques, creating 10 tracks in a new session, and prepare that for a class on Thursday of you. 
What now? You don't have to. I was showing you just different ways to try it out, basically. Try, I mean, try to be creative with your 10 different tracks, okay? But try to re-record, this is your task. This was supposed to be an in-class assignment, but we didn't get to it, okay? I'm, I'm making it homework, okay? So do this, prepare this for homework, okay? You can't, uh, I haven't covered how to bounce yet, so you don't know how to bounce it and post it to SoundCloud, but start working on this session as a homework assignment, okay? Because I do want a new SoundCloud greeting posted eventually before the weekend, okay? So start working on this before Thursday. The other homework is you need to choose a video. If you haven't noticed on Blackboard, there's a, set, there's a discussion board thread with uh, the different videos that you're going to be using for your Unit 2 project. You need to choose one of those, okay, and register your choice just by responding to the thread for that video, okay? Uh, if you're not clear how to do that, uh, yes. So on Blackboard right now, in today's folder, just so I'm showing you guys what you're doing here. There's a homework. Pick a video. Click on that. There's eight different videos. All you have to do is hit reply. I want to use this video. Make sense? Okay. That's the other homework for Thursday. Okay. We're out of time. So I will see you all Thursday. If you have questions, I'm happy to stick around here and answer some of them. Okay. The ten